Want an edge for betting the Super Bowl? Click the link in the description to download VSIN's free betting guide. But right now, my conversation with Mike Golick Jr. down at Radio Row. Here you go. Normally, it is uh, Wednesdays at 6.15 Eastern, but, you know, things are in flux here at the Super Bowl. But Mike Golick Jr., part of the Gojo and Golick Show on DK Network, joining us here down on Radio Row. All right, man, first and foremost, you survive in the week so far. It's Thursday in Vegas. It's, you know, some people think it's two and a half is the over-under on days you could survive Vegas. Oh, and you should hammer the under every time. <laughs> I'm doing better than anyone who's spent like 100-plus hours in Las Vegas should ever feel at this point in time. I think the thing that's knocked me back on my heels so much this week is we do so much of this remote yeah. and seeing that you were, in fact, a giant <laughs> once we got out here to Las Vegas. It is stunning length on the set at V-CIN here from Tim. Yeah, that is true. I was uh, the, the two biggest discussion points are I can't believe Patrick <laughs> Mahomes is an underdog and oh my god how tall are you it's so, incredible yeah it is uh, sitting next to a former offensive lineman and uh, holding my own a little bit from a from a height standpoint athleticism eh, maybe not so much all right let's get into this game let's go offensive line first yep. uh, who's got a better offensive line who I think overall Kansas City now certainly it, it, it's a both a battle of where your congregation of talent is in Kansas City. We know it's that interior of the offensive line. After the last time uh, we saw Patrick Mahomes really get walloped in a Super Bowl against Tampa Bay, they went out, they remade that entire group. Creed Humphrey has become one of the best centers in the NFL. Joe Tooney, who unfortunately yeah. I, we don't think is going I, to be playing I would in doubt this it, game. But yeah, we'll see. An all-pro at that position. Trey Smith, who they hit the jackpot on late in the draft because of some health concerns. That interior, when healthy, as good as there is in the NFL, they're fortunate to have great depth with Nick Alex ready who stepped in in the AFC title game tackles where a bit of the concern comes in right Juwan Taylor's had some uh, false start issues this year Donovan Smith went healthy still a guy that sometimes can struggle to stay in front of guys but I, I look at them it's almost the inverse then on the other side for the tackle situation in San Francisco right. where you've got one of the best players in the NFL and Trent Williams at left tackle a walk-in hall of famer you look down the rest of that line guys like Aaron Banks in the interior they've got good solid players but your guy Aaron Banks I love domer. A, we love a domer in there getting after it but it's always a lot of it falls on Colt McKivitz over at right tackle because you're usually not going to send your best rusher all the time over to the Trent Williams buzzsaw. And so Colton gets a lot of their best on a down in, down out basis. And I think for both teams, it's that challenge of, all right, you've got Kansas City's tackles a little bit more of the question mark against great edge rusher like Nick Bosa coming from San Francisco. Meanwhile, for the 49ers, the interior may be a little bit more of the question. And, of course, you've got Chris Jones right. knocking on the door from the other side. That's what I was going to get to. Mike Golick Jr. hanging out with us here down on Radio Row. Chris Jones, you were a sinner in your playing yeah. days. Oh, God. Uh, trying to no. <laughs> block Chris Jones. Take us through the, the life of uh, what the 49ers are dealing with right now. So every once in a while you get up to the line and you know, you know the call, you're waiting to see what the you know the defense looks like here with the linebackers are and usually the center of the quarterback, whoever is in charge is going to point out, hey, and set the protection. So we know which way, usually the center sliding to help somebody. And every once in a while you hear the slide go the other way. You look across and you see a guy like Chris Jones. For me in college, I played against Aaron Donald, so this was the oblique <laughs> feeling when I would see that. <laughs> And Whatever you look happened across, to Aaron Donald? You know what? I don't know if things worked out for that kid after that. He was all right that yeah. day. My biggest career highlight is still not ending up on his draft day highlight reel. That's good. It's the best hey, thing I ever did. Small things in life. But it, it really is that moment where you got to kind of tighten the chin strap a little bit. And there's not going to be that many instances in a game where they're going to allow Chris Jones to be single covered right. by anybody. My dad, who's calling the game, has talked about all week. Through this playoffs, he's been one of the most double-teamed players in football. But every once in a while, you're going to get into an obvious passing down, and you're not going to be able to avoid it. And so for those guys in that matchup, it's going to be, can I just hold on? Can I get in front of him long enough? If I get beat a little bit, can I get beat late and edge? Because he's a great player. He's going to get his eventually, and you have to know that going in. And so it's about mitigating disaster to the best of your ability. When you look at both these defensive lines, I think the, the headliners, obviously, Bosa for the 49ers, Jones for Chiefs. Carl Loftus has continued to elevate Man. his game. There's been a lot of questions. I'm a D.C. guy seeing Chase Young. Like, eh, how is he going to perform here? Who's the X factor outside of the obvious of Bosa and Jones? Who's the X factor, do you think, comes Sunday defensive line-wise? Uh, I, I, I think you mentioned it. George Karloftis has really flashed oh, throughout a lot of this season, but I think especially in the postseason. Uh, certainly it helps, and we talk about this with rush tandems all the time, being opposite a guy like Chris Jones and how they move him all around the line does create advantageous matchups for George Karloftis, who's not going to face a lot of those same double teams, but he showed up in flashes in the run game. He's a guy that they can move in a little bit. They can put him on the edge, and for Steve Spagnola, he so prizes, I think at every level, 
level of his defense, that multiplicity, that ability for guys to move around in a lot of different areas, present a lot of different looks. And so I think, you know, for them, it's always been that struggle, right? Going back to, you know, a, a guy like D4, when they brought in Frank Clark, it's always been trying to find that other guy to help out in that group. And when you pay Patrick Mahomes, and a lot of these other players, what you do, you've got to be able to hit on guys in the draft. And George Karloftis certainly seems like he's paying dividends for that. Mike Jones Jr. hanging with us, who uh, apparently uh, with his uh, insight on Jeff Halfley is now an insider in, uh, in Green Bay. That 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 clip just went all over the place. Big ups, cheeseheads, man. I had a great time when I went out to Green Bay. I'm counting on some free cheese curds and spotted cow the next time in town after the oh, kind words. Spotted cow, man. That's that's yeah. where it's at. Only in the state of Wisconsin, though. Can't get it anywhere else. Nope. So exclusive. I'll just say, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Lambeau Field in a couple years. Take care of us. No big deal. All right. Uh, you're a noted Swifty. Sure. Um, her boyfriend, pretty good at what he does. Decent. Travis Kelsey. What do you expect from him? He is going to be, as you've talked about, I'm sure, on your show, the most popular prop bet of the week. Anytime touchdown, over under 70 and a half receiving yards, six and a half receptions. What do you expect from Travis Kelsey on Sunday? Yeah, I, I think I expect more. The anytime touchdown would be the most appealing one yep. to me just because he's been such a dynamic red zone threat. And we've seen it's not just, hey, in the early rounds like we saw where Buffalo's linebacker group was racked with injuries. The same with Miami, really. Yep. Those were bad matchups there. But as we've gone on, we saw great on great Kyle Hamilton, one of the best cover guys in the league in that slot, big safety role there going against Roquan Smith. He excelled in those big moments. He's really hit the fountain of youth, but I still don't think there's going to be enough volume in the Chiefs passing attack. If the game script goes the way we expect, if the Chiefs are going to win, it's going to involve the ground game a lot, and it's going to be that relationship between Pat and Travis being able to be more timely and pointed rather than, I think, overwhelming with volume. What do you make? I've never asked you this. What do you make of Brock Purdy's game? Because yeah. he, if he was a third-round pick, Mike, I believe that – it's a situation where, oh, it's just a, a third-round pick, you know, sure. no big deal. But because he's Mr. Irre Irrelevant, he has that tag on him, yeah. that kind of continues to get lumped in on him. But you just look at the stats, he's been a top-10 quarterback this year. So what do you make of Brock Purdy's game? I, I, I think this has been a good week to kind of reset with Brock Purdy, where we can go and appreciate and say, all right, the guy shouldn't be here based on where he was drafted. Sure. He also finished last year injured, which I don't think gets talked about <laughs> nearly enough. He had this season coming off an injury to his throwing elbow in the NFC Championship game last year. And so I think with his game, obviously not the most physically toolsy player in the world, but delivers the ball on time and accurately here. We've seen can make more plays with his legs and certainly has late in the game. His fourth quarter numbers, his second half numbers, all really outpaced Jimmy Garoppolo, who's yep. the guy he's constantly compared to. And so I think for a quarterback, I'm always looking for what's the thing you can do to bail us out? He works well within the body of the offense. We know that's not a sexy top conversation topic, but I do believe his ability to buy time with his legs and make some of those throws yep. with confidence because of the environment he's come up with and his ability to also take off. And now the Kansas City Chiefs are going to know going into this, Brock Purdy, legs are a, real, re legs are a threat. We saw it change the body yep. of the game last week. And so I, I do think that X factor of him being able to do that enough at a high enough level to make it a threat does add that wrinkle to his game where maybe you can say a little bit more game changer than game manager since that's always the conversation. Whose system would you rather play in, Andy Reid or Kyle Shanahan? Who, uh, I think it's an offensive lineman, Kyle Shanahan system. And both of them do a great job in helping out guys. I was an undersized guy, so I like teams that major in outside zone. Sure. You get a chance to wash the defense, get those guys running and uncomfortable and that benefits you on passing downs. Then we see so much of their play action scheme is built off of wide zone looks. The defense is having to go out there and honor their gap integrity and do all those things. And especially when you're going to play a defense like Kansas City that's going to throw so many looks at you, it's going to blitz you so much. I want to get them back on their toes all of a sudden. I don't want to let them dictate the terms. And between that, the heavy personnel that you get, the tight end usage, all of those things either help stymie rushers on the edge, make it a little bit more difficult for guys to get loose in the interior without getting caught up in the wash. And just overall, it does so much to help you, uh, especially for a guy like me that was undersized. All right, final 45 seconds. Mike Golick Jr. hanging with us. All right, prediction time. Who's winning? Total sits at 47 and a half. Spread two in favor of the Niners. Winner, MVP. Uh, I went Chiefs 24-21, and I got Patrick Mahomes taking over the MVP. Keeping I, it simple. I, keeping it simple. Uh, and it's one of those things where 
I, I started off jokingly after the conference championship weekend where I picked against Patrick Mahomes. I in that too. game, I picked against him against the Buffalo <laughs> Bills. And I joked and I said, no matter what, I'm not going to let myself get talked out of this during the week. But I, I do think there's a lot of football reasons for this. And a lot of it goes back for me is the Chiefs figured out who they were when they got to the postseason. And I think the more and more we look at this combination of Mahomes and Andy Reid, the regular seasons are going to be a lot of them trying to figure out with each year and the new roster and the constraints around it what the identity looks like, what they do best, so that they can buckle down in the postseason. And now this year they've gone the all-important next step of saying, hey, we don't need to be the one seed. Yep. We can go on the road and do this. We can do it a different way. As long as we figure out who we are and what we do best, they've, man man I think, tripled their use of multiple tight end sets, 12 and 13 personnel. And so I think because they're so sure of themselves and they got a quarterback that can just make the plays when called upon, even if it's not every down, I, I, I got to pick them in this one. Mike Golick, Jr. All right, we're joined now by the better Mike Golick. There we talked go. to the younger one earlier, yeah. but look at the hair. I mean, the hair just makes it stand apart. So between the hair and the graying, beard I want to I grew started growing the beard during COVID and I had tried before and my wife laughed at me when I would try but for some reason you know during COVID she's like oh it looks pretty good why don't you leave it so my hair is getting gray my beard's getting gray I want to eventually have it all be white and be like Moses that's my goal, <laughs> that I put a robe on, have a, have a staff, and I stand there and look like Moses. Well, you, the, the wisdom is, uh, is protruding <laughs> out. Uh, not only is, uh, is Mike Golick Sr. on Gojo and Golick here on the DK Network, you'll be sidelines yes. of the Super Bowl. What number Super Bowl is this? Is this number one? This, as far as working, it's number three. Yeah, it's about 27 three. overall, but I would always go wow. home. Uh, but since I've been working with uh, Westwood One, I do Sunday night games with Ryan Radke. My guy. And then, yes, love Ryan. And then they asked me a couple of years ago, hey, can you be like, the, you know, the late, great Tony Saragusa sure. and be like a game analyst on the field? We have Kevin Harlan and Kurt Warner in the booth and Laura Oakman, the true professional oh, sideline. Uh, yes, on the, on the field. So I'm like, yeah, I get to work the Super Bowl and I'm up close and personal for the halftime shows. How great is that? Yeah. So uh, you'll let us know about uh, Usher's performance yes. down there. Uh, a lot to get to. Uh, and I'm sure our, my, my viewers are all laughing that the two guests I've had on today both played and graduated from Notre Dame. Well, uh, so, you know, you, know hey. the, the, you walk around, you like to talk to smart people. Ryan Harris is coming in studio. Go ahead and be jealous all you want, gang. <laughs> what are you going to do? We look, Coming up on Go, uh, Go Joe and Golick, we're going to have Sam Hartman, Ooh. another domer there. I mean, we had Joe Montana. I mean, what are you doing to your son? I mean, your son is follically challenged, and yeah. you're bringing in the man who may have the greatest head of hair in, in all of Radio Row and Sam Hartman. The best-looking quarterback in college football last year and the best hair. <laughs> who, at, and he was at the Senior Bowl, have you ever seen a player get a slow-mo of running their fingers through their hair? <laughs> Sam Hartman did. I mean, it's, inc it's incredible. No easy transition from that. No. But let's get into quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, let's get to Brock Purdy. I talked to your son about Brock Purdy. You'll see him up close and personal. Yeah. Not sure how many 49er games you did this did year. but You know, I, I said this to Mike, and I'll say it to you. If he was third-round pick Brock Purdy, mm -hmm. I think he would get a little bit more credit. But because he's Mr. Irrelevant, and look, the guy, it's not his fault that Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, and George Kittle are really, really good at what right. they do. What do you see about Brock Purdy's game, and where can he go as a quarterback in this I, I'm amazed at the lack of gratitude is the wrong word, of, of stock up we give him. Sure. I remember talking to Richard Sherman a couple of weeks ago, the, great Seattle, but former 49er as well. He said, America loves an underdog story, but they don't love Brock Purdy, yeah. which, which I don't get. And I know Cam Newton has come out and said 10th best player on a team. Now, listen, there are great players on that team, but Cam also said he's not a game changer, and I completely disagree with that. He has the ball in his hand every play, and he can make the throws that can change a game. I did the, I call the San Francisco Green Bay playoff yeah. game where they came back. He made a beautiful throw down the middle to Juwan Jennings in that game when they needed it. So he can make the throw when it needs to be, it needs to be made. But you're right. And it's not his fault, the talent around him, but he still has to get the ball there. And, and this is the example. And, and you have to really watch. It's Because every pass, a completion pass, isn't just a completion. San Francisco has led the league since Kyle's been there in yards after catch. When you throw what looks like a simple swing pass or a simple slant pass, watch the way the ball gets there. If that swing pass is behind the, the running back a little bit and they have to get spun around, not many yards after the catch. If that slant is thrown low or behind the receiver, not many yards after the catch. 
Brock puts it right where the running back or wide receiver needs it to continue running after the catch. That's why it's so successful. It's the little things like that. And it's not like he just throws short passes and led the league in yards per attempt at like over nine yards per attempt. So he gets the ball downfield as well. Yeah, I'm from D.C. and Kyle Shanahan was there. Right. They drafted Robert Griffin the yep. third, But the quarterback the Shanahan's really loved was Kirk Cousins. Right. And there's always been rumors about him maybe reuniting at some point. And you see a lot of Kirk Cousins in Brock Purdy, I think, which is not a knock. Her no. cousins is is very efficient. So when you look at uh, you know Brock Purdy, do you think Kyle trusts Brock Purdy more than Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, that's a good question because well, I mean, what was what had been proven because Jimmy did it in a play in a Super Bowl right. overthrowing an open receiver. Right. It's amazing how Jimmy Garoppolo had such a great winning record, but you get remembered for that sure. one play, right? And for Brock, it was like unrealized gains when you're in the NFC title game with Philadelphia and you get your elbow hit and all of a sudden it's it's ball game, yeah. right? And now he doesn't get hurt and now they're in the Super Bowl. Even though, as I said, calling the Green Bay game, he was off. Yeah. He did not play well. Throw he a couple admitted of turnover worthy throws he and did. they were dropped. Whether it was slick out in the ball or it was was uh, a slipper in his hand, whether it was he didn't play week 18 so he had basically 19 days off in between games, so was it a little bit of rust there, but he did not play well. And then in Detroit, first half, 7 of 15, 93 yards and a pick. Second half, he was money, though. Right. So he can he can get there when he needs to, and, and, and we'll have to see. Pat Mahomes, we're used to him making plays. Brock Purdy, we're saying, oh, he's got a lot of great receivers. All he has to do is dish it to him. It's a lot harder than saying just got to dish it to him. You know, and not, not everybody can just go do that. A fun thing that I'd like to be doing this week, Mike, is asking people outside of quarterback, advantage Kansas City. Skill position yeah. players advantage San Francisco. Outside of that, I think there's a lot of fun discussions to be had. So as a former defensive lineman like yourself, who's got a better D-line? A better D-line? San Francisco has a deeper D-line for sure. But who's sure. got a better D-line? I would say probably still San Francisco okay. has a better D-line. The issue San Francisco had was they were three in the league against the run in the regular season. but yeah, have what's, given... what's gone wrong in your opinion? So I talked to Fred Warner um, uh, on Monday. Yeah. Uh, before they went out in public with uh, with the media night. And I said, dude, listen, yeah. you guys were great against a run, then you're not. He said, you know what? It's execution on our part. He said, he said, he said to me, you know, as a D lineman, everybody has their gap. Everybody, D lineman has their gaps. Linebackers have the other gaps, and people fill. He said, we had two guys in the same gap opening up a hole. And then we're not getting to the ball as a team well enough when a running back is running free. He said, that's on us. He said, that's what we have to do. Play your responsibility. If I'm the three technique on the guard, B gap is mine. If I'm the backside D tackle and one technique, that A gap is mine. Boy, their backers fill in A gaps, B gaps, ends and C gaps, and outside, who has outside contained. Do your job. Have your, it's almost like a picket fence. Do your job, make the play if it comes to you. Right. If you're not doing your job, it opens up a big hole. You could have 10 guys do their job, one guy doesn't, and it happens to be where the ball is, you're in a lot of trouble. And so he said they weren't executing there, and it's something that they have to, they have to, to fix. The matchups I'm looking for, I think this is going to be a defensive game. We can talk about Purdy, Pat Mahomes, the tight ends, Kittle and, and Kelsey, all we want. But I think this is a defensive game. Nick Bolton for Kansas City. And uh, and uh, Warner, Fred Warner for for San Francisco. Fred was number one opposing passer rating when he's the nearest defender. Nick Bolton number three. So two of the best linebackers in coverage when they're in coverage. And you got the two best tight ends in right. the game as well. So how does that dynamic work? Whether those linebackers are in man at times or zone at times. If you're in man, obviously man coverage. How do you do? And there has been six times where Fred Warner has been the nearest defender on Kelsey in the past. Five catches for Kelsey, 63 yards. But a more important thing for the defense of Kansas City, because San Francisco is so good on yards after the catch, is you got to make the tackle when the ball is caught. You run a slant. Three yard slant, they get the completion. You got to make the tackle three, four yards. That's it. You can't let them go for 15. Swing pass out of the backfield. Now you're one on one. Safety comes up, whoever is one on one with a Christian McCaffrey. Who wins? Who makes the tackle? You make that tackle, you win. Christian shakes you, gains 15. There you go. It's a, as, as, as X's and O's as we want to get, as chess matches we want to get, it's a game of one on ones. All right, final minute with Mike Golick Sr. You can catch him, Gojo and Golick, and listen to him, Super Bowl Sunday sideline analyst with Westwood One. You got to pick Spagnola 
Wilkes, who's your defensive coordinator of choice? Well, I think Spagnuolo has been having that defense of Kansas City playing because a lot of it is what have you done for me lately, yep. right? And I equate what Kansas City has done to when Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay and they won the Super Bowl. Tom did, wouldn't even have gotten to the Super Bowl had that defense not balled out in the playoffs. Yeah. Look what KC defense does in Buffalo and especially what they did in Baltimore. They stoned Baltimore with the, M, this two-time MVP coming up and Lamar Jackson and the best running game in the league, even though uh, Baltimore inexplicably Six didn't carries. run. Six carries. Ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Don't understand it yeah. at all. But that KC defense with Spagnolo. the it, it, it's offense, it's motion, defense, it's bring six guys up on the line, but you don't blitz. Sometimes you do. You still bring four, but what four are coming? You try and confuse. It's a confusion defense now. I like their aggressiveness. I like the way they're playing right now, whereas San Francisco, we just talked about, they've been giving up the run, so they have to shore that up because they got the meanest runner in the game and Isaiah Pacheco coming up. Gojo and Golick weekdays on DK Network. Catch Golick Sr. on the sidelines of the Super Bowl. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a vsun pro subscriber today.